Uh, this is the Bible Touchstone here, just responding to a video from 4096X. We've been having a discussion here on the prophecy of the new heavens and the new earth. And this is my rebuttal to his video, Elementary My Dear Watson, continuation of chat with Bible Touchstone regarding 2 Peter chapter 3. And my position, of course, is the full preterist position in the interpretation that the new heavens and the new earth are actually realized realities in the new covenant for believers. And 4096X, he elaborated on his position where enough to where we can understand that by the elements, which are said to be destroyed with fervent heat in the passage 2 Peter chapter 3, he doesn't see them as literally destroyed, but he does see the earth and heaven to be literally purged with literal fire, even though fire is made of material elements. He made it clear that he means that the cosmos and the natural fabric of reality, the basic elements of those, the rudimentary elements of physical creation, will actually be literally consumed and will be reconstituted in a very material and physical way. So by heavens he must mean the literal atmosphere, and though heavens won't be literally destroyed according to his position, I suppose everything in the air, including foul of the air, and everything on the surface of the planet will be consumed with fire and burnt toast to a crisp. But that earth won't literally be destroyed either, as it wasn't literally destroyed during the flood. Made clear that he doesn't see a distinction between the old world, which Peter says was destroyed by the flood, and the heaven and earth which are of now, which Peter spoke of. And also he does acknowledge there is a distinction between the new heavens and the new earth. But, of course, they're going to be literal and physical according to 49.6x is interpretation. So we're going to look at some of his arguments here. The first argument that I could see in his video was that when Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent, which is still future, there will be a judgment of fire. And he gets this from his view of 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, his second premise is actually a rhetorical question, has Jesus came back? And he says, of course not, according to his view, his conclusion is that it is obvious that the judgment of fire has not already occurred. And from this, it's clear that he's confused a little bit about the full preterist position, because of course he's begging the question, it's not necessarily a logical argument, because he's assuming that the second coming has already happened, like I am also positing that the second coming has happened, and I regard that because of my faith and what he's done, and what I believe the scriptures have revealed to mankind. So, the next part argument that I could see is he also talks about my usage of Adam Clark, where I appeal to Adam Clark in his interpretation of Second Peter, to basically to affirm my position, to appeal to what he said, and 4096x he makes clear that Adam Clark and John Wesley were, of course, futurists. And so that I couldn't use this as for any kind of support for my position. But my intention was, when I appealed to Adam Clark, was to show that how somebody from a totally different theological base as me could come to a very similar conclusion as to the text that we're dealing with, specifically Second Peter chapter 3. So even though Adam Clark is a futurist and an Arminian, because I'm a Calvinist and a Preterist, I can also show that the interpretation that I'm giving is not just unique to the Preterist camp, that this wasn't just something invented to support the full Preterist position, but this is actually a legitimate, precedented interpretation as for the destruction of the elements, meaning the Jewish economy, and so forth. So, also, the next argument we see here from 4096X is that we both agree that the new heavens and the new earth, the prophecy in 2 Peter chapter 3, is actually an allusion to the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 65 and 66 are the direct allusion. And he also acknowledges that the Old Testament, the Tanakh, and the prophets of the Tanakh actually use metaphorical, symbolic, apocalyptic language 
And he suggests that sometimes the fulfillment of these prophecies, which are sometimes vague or pictorial or apocalyptic, turn out to be literal and very literal in their fulfillment in Jesus Christ. And I agree with that, too. He gives some examples. God walked on the earth. And I'm not quite sure what what allusion he's making to the Old Testament and as regards to a specific prophecy, but there are like prophecies that do describe the first advent of Jesus Christ that are fulfilled literally, and also about how there's a sacrifice of a suffering servant which seems to anticipate the passion of Jesus Christ, which appears not appears to be pictorial language in the Old Testament, but once it's realized in the New Testament, it appears to be very literal. Now, using this argument to look at Second Peter chapter three is it's probably warranted, but I don't think forty ninety six X is willing to use that view that all apocalyptic language, which is metaphorical, is to be realized physically and literally all the time. Try having a debate with a Jewish person about the gospel, whether the gospel is a fulfillment all the time, literally, of metaphorical language and apocalyptic language. You won't get very far at all. Also, there are plenty, for example, there are plenty of examples where there is metaphorical language or symbolic or apocalyptic language that sounds to be apocalyptic in the Old Testament prophets and then is revealed or realized very spiritually in Jesus Christ. For example, the coming of the kingdom, etc. Now, 4096X, he probably posits that there will be a future temple, I'm not sure, maybe even a reinstitution of the Levitical order, even though we have a high priest that cannot be changed, a priesthood that cannot be changed, even though believers are a royal priesthood, and even though there is an eternal temple not made with hands, the body of Jesus Christ. But perhaps he also agrees that thinks that there's going to be maybe a reinstitution of the sacrificial system, even though the atonement of Jesus Christ is sufficient. So, I mean, we're, we'd have to discuss these things further to see where he stands on some prophecies still being to be fulfilled 